Now it's very hot here today, um, 30 degrees, so I've come into the woods to get a bit of shade. Now at first sight this is a, a very complicated uh, scene um, and it will be a good opportunity to demonstrate the difference between being literal and being realistic. I hope to be a realistic. I'm not a botanist or a, spe a specialist in the knowledge of trees. Um, but it will be the light and shade that I'm, in, I'm most keen to, uh, to depict in my painting. And as it's so warm, I'm actually painting a slightly smaller size than I would normally. This is quarter imperial, about 15 inches wide and 11 inches high. Now I'll just put in one or two of the main forms um, with, the, uh, with the pencil starting with this sort of tree in the um, foreground all sorts of broken logs and twigs and branches um, in the foreground it's a real chaotic mess mm. now the, gr the, uh, the ground slopes down from the left to the right and that's quite important. Um, feature to try and get hold of. And it, 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 trees go back into the distance. And obviously I've got to do a fair amount of elimination and simplification here. particularly under these very hot circumstances when the paint is going to dry very quickly. Now as you draw each tree, they're fairly sort of upright, um, these trees. Um, as you draw each tree, just look at the space between them and try and get slightly uneven chaotic feel to the, the picture. Pick out one or two logs and colours within the painting which will be a good representation of, of the, uh, the other uh, twi twigs and branches laying about. What I particularly like is the uh, the variation in the um, shadows, the warm ochres and greens. Very few branches, these are all quite upright um, trunks of trees and there's very few the branches going out of the sides of these conifers. I 
a lot of negative painting going to happen here with the, uh, the light struck trunks so it's a case of forcing out the um, the trunks um, against the, um, the darker background Now I use a variety of brushes in this scene, although I get a lot out, I'll probably end up using three at most four of them. Now because it's such a hot day, um, I've got a slightly different palette, a restricted palette, um, and it's got some nice guffy soft paint in, a fairly limited palette, Windsor Blue, French Ultramarine, Cobalt, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Cadmium Orange, Raw Sienna, Cadmium Yellow, Elysian Crimson, Hooker's Green, I don't think I should be using these, but that's cadmium red, and I think that might be Payne's grey or ivory black. But it's very important to have nice guppy paint, because even on warm days you'll find that there's nothing worse than the paint drying in the palette. And then you're scrubbing away. Right, well let's sort of make a start. Um, There's quite a lot of dappled shadow on this, which is a little bit annoying. You want some nice, attractive colours on this. This is a bit of burnt sienna, raw sienna, and a tiny bit of cobalt. Um, let's get these colours through here. I'm going to paint round the trees I keep changing the colour and I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium yellow It's a little bit more bluer through there Um, burnt Umber, Ultramarine, let's just put a little bit of a litter in. It's very important, I think, to keep changing the colour. Um, what comes down here on this side? Um, now there's some really bright green. So this is a bit of hooker's green and cadmium yellow and a little bit of raw sienna. Don't try and paint every little leaf. Keep screwing your eyes up and look at it in terms of masses. Now we can raw sienna. Let's have a little bit of cadmium red, a colour I said I wouldn't use, but there's so much attractive yellow on that. Just a bit more cadmium yellow, or even a bit of cadmium orange. Raw sienna. Oh, sorry, burnt, burnt sienna. Back to the ultramarine and burnt sienna. Carry on with this left hand side. Now there's bound to be little flecks of white. 
just simply I'm in a hurry to get across this paper before it dries out. Hold the brush at the handle end so you have a nice free brush stroke. Right, I think I'll just establish this um, tree in the uh, foreground first of all. So some Windsor, Windsor blue and burnt sienna and a bit of cadmium. It's fairly dark actually when I compare it with the other tones. And like many trees, the trunk is more green than brown. Let's start at the top where it's in shade. There's occasional areas that are lighter. Raw sienna and a bit of hooker's green here. Let's change it as we come down the left hand side which is catching a lot of the light. Um, let's put a bit of alizarin crimson with that. And of course the shadow on the left hand side, if I go back into that with thicker paint, although I'm painting against a dark, a damp area, it won't go into a cauliflower because the thicker paint will absorb much of the um, excess moisture. You only get cauliflowers when you go into damp, wet areas. Um, with a brush loaded with a, a more dilute wash. Quite a dark green at the bottom here, sort of a mossy green. Try a bit of cadmium orange there. And then a little bit more burnt sienna. It's important to try and join that up to the uh, to the rest of the picture um, and have some sort of indication of the shadow going across here and I'm trying I'm simplifying it a bit and squinting at the same time to stop myself being distracted by all of the branches Another bits of log here. And if while well, that's drying out, cobalt and burnt sienna, we can probably um, just indicate a little bit of texturing with thicker paint, still still a bit damp, but just a bit of thicker paint just to indicate some sort of texture on the uh, of the bark on the tree. Keep the detail or um, confine the detail to the light struck areas um, because it's all got a bit lost really in the, uh, the darker areas. In the shade. Just widen, widen that base a bit. And let's just have one little shadow across like that. That's slightly invented, but it helps. And have another one there. It helps. Perhaps down there. I can't resist it. Shadows from other trees. Are they? They're like the braces on a fat man. They indicate that the. Um, tree is round. 
and it's a car shadow rather than a shaded side. Now that's, I feel a little bit more encouraged now I've got that uh, tree in. So let's go for some of the other trees. The, uh, I think the important thing to try and bear in mind is keep each tree as individual as you can. Um, very tempting to uh, paint, get a, get a tree trunk mixture and then paint, go around and colour in all of the trees. That would be a mistake. Um, it's quite light that. Let's put, put a bit of alliterin crimson just for the fun of making it different. These ones are further into the distance. So I need, I can sort of simplify those. And have now this is a, a lighter green one on this side. It's a little bit of a cadmium yellow to make the green a little bit lighter. And now burnt umber and cobalt. Oops. And dark at the top and then down on the side here. And with some burnt sienna and cadmium orange, let's just indicate a little bit of shadow that casts down there. Some of the trees are almost trunks are almost a light grey. The burnt umber and ultramarine. Stiffer mixture. And that will fuse to give a soft edge between the shaded side and the, the car shadow. And by indicating some sort of shadow straight away, it links it to the ground. Obviously the ones way in the distance won't have the same detail of light and shade on them. Yeah. So we could actually indicate a certain amount of texture by just having we might a bit of dry, dry brush. Um, I'll put some light and shade on this side, a bit dark at the top. And the shadows are always very useful in how they go from one side of the tree behind. So they help give depth to the picture as the shadows go disappear behind various trees, you know, like this. And of course a slight drop down towards the um, down towards the right hand corner will help. Very light colours for these ones. Some of them are a little bit warmer colour.
just bring a tiny bit of shadow there and there and then reappears on the other side and is gradually lost in the green bracken and of course there will be shadows from trees outside the uh, picture boundary on the uh, left Right, now that we've allowed that to dry out, we'll need to force out some of these trees in the background. Um, so ultramarine and burnt sienna and raw sienna. It's alternately dark, light, and, um, green in places. Can't see any sky. So let's start there and there. Now there'll be odd areas of quite light green and it'll go over the some of it'll dappen across these tree trunks a little bit darker and keep that light there because I'm coming up against a, a, a dark area there. A little light there. there. Then back to a little bit of darkness, put a bit of blue in it. It'll help suggest distance. A bit, just tidy it up a bit so it's a little bit, bit more careful with the edges, keep them nice and straight. Once they look loose, that's not the same as being careless. So I still want them to represent trees. And green here. If you do paint on one side of the tree, then try and paint on the other side at the same time so it doesn't look as if there's a change in the background behind the tree. You know, if there's any changes, make them out in the open. A little bit lighter, just here, here and here. Ultramarine. A bit more ultramarine. So what we want to try and do is represent the reality of the dappled light coming through the trees. Which isn't the same as being realistic and painting everything botanically correct. Which doesn't interest me, frankly. 
and would be quite tiresome to do. Let's try cadmium and cobalt to give me a lighter green. Cobalt, so that dark mixture, a bit more burnt sooner. There's all sorts of shadows and things in here. particularly dark way in the corner there so some winds of blue and burnt burnt umber now there's where there's one or two little light branches you can often just use your nail to scratch some out. If it's not dried, the very early ones have dried out a bit quick. Now, come down. Well, let's just get some burnt sienna and ultramarine to give you some of these darker shadows that are coming across here, and that will link that background to this foreground. With a dry brush. This is some Arsh 140 pound rough paper. Um, when it's very hot you need a paper with a reasonable size on the surface to retard the, the, the drying. Absorb, absorbent papers in hot weather are very hard to paint on because so much of the moisture um, is, is absorbed into the paper anything left very quickly evaporates um, so you want the maximum moisture on the paper to um, delay the uh, evaporation to keep the paint workable Right, well I think we'll set about some of these long uh, shadows from the left hand side um, to the uh, bottom right hand side which will give me the not only the direction of the sunlight will reinforce at least the direction of the sunlight but also indicate the, uh, the contour of the land as it falls away. Right now this is mainly ultramarine blue and burnt sienna tiny bit of um, hooker's green which is going to be made it's quite a, a warm it's a little bit of dry brush in this um,
Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna, tiny bit of cadmium, um, cadmium orange. Cadmium orange, glycerin crimson. More ultramarine blue with that. Very strong. Cool in colour. Make it a bit darker there to set up the light on the side of that. All sorts of broken twigs here. And then I'm going to come down, just strengthen the shadow here. Now I don't feel I've got that side, the side of this tree dark enough. So I'll just restate that. And dry brush the edge of it. That's better. Now there's all sorts of broken twigs in the slot, some of which we can scratch out. Just with a finger now. It's sort of giving the picture, making it a little bit more untidy. Now that's darkened that tree, so I'm just going to darken one or two of these others. Although I always try and get everything painted once, the way I want it to look. I will say I don't always succeed. Um, and uh, when I don't, I recognise it, but it's, this is essentially a tonal problem. And um, if you've got the tones wrong, normally the um, correction will will be will be okay, even though it requires some overpainting. Um, it's overpainting um, with a lack. Of, over, I would say overpainting for a, what I call a good painterly reason um, is usually um, you can usually get away with it. I'm going to darken just odd little bits of this through here. And there will be one or two darker trunks going up as well amongst the lighter ones. It's a good idea to sort of do some darks against lights, lights against darks, to get that sort of pattern of whether the trees are dark at the top, whether they've got shade on them, and that will stop the eye 
of the viewer disappearing out the top of the picture as they follow the we follow the light all sorts of twigs and branches Because some of these twigs and branches are laid down or fallen down I should say they'll be dark against the light Some of these are quite, quite big. It's got a slightly smaller brush. And of course, the way to get depth in your picture is to have one thing in front of another. We're prepared to have some quite dark, rich colours in those places. Now this is a little bit of cadmium red, uh, sorry, cadmium yellow and cadmium orange, just to indicate sort of very, almost like gouache straight out of the tube. Get that light in various places. Put a bit of glitter and crimson with it and the focus green and cadmium yellow and just get one or two little specks of light green. I think we'll call it just 
I think you call that a day. Well, I hope that's encouraged you to have a go at these perhaps more intimidating and complex scenes. Um, but be ruthless in terms of simplification. Keep squinting at the subject to eliminate all of those unnecessary details. And remember not to be too literal. This is an important dis distinction. But be a realistic. And the realism here is the dappled strong sunlight coming through the trees, bouncing off the trunks and making these nice long cast shadows. I'm not sure I've necessarily caught them um, successfully, um, but I've had a go and it's been a pleasant morning despite being very hot. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.